This meeting is being recorded. Good afternoon, welcome to Poultry and Pros. This evening we are featuring Dr. Johnny Kuman Singh as Poultry and Pros Porter of the Month. Um, so we will we want to welcome everybody and thank all the people who are reading from his work. You know, I just have, uh, so if you can see this as the book we are reading from, 15 Christmases, 15 Christmas poems and some. Okay, so we'll start the meeting with um, Johnny's good friend and um, journalist and many other hats. Tony Dial would interview Johnny Kuman Singh. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, Johnny. All right. I am fine. All right. All right. Thanks, friends, yes. for joining us. Thank you very much for joining us. You know, I go back to the days when we pronounced poetry as poultry. <laughs> Until the teacher pulled out her letter and made us check it out. <laughs> there are a lot of Johnnies around, including some here tonight, Johnny Cash, which most likely is very true in his case. There's Johnny Come Lately, which is not as true because he left Trinidad earlier when he got where he got his PhD and became a university lecturer. But he's also Johnny Be Good because everything he touches or put his mind and tremendous, considerable, and still untapped resources to, it turns out to be Johnny very good. This is the ability that puts him at the head of the class wherever he went in this world and wherever he goes in the future. I would have said at this stage, will the real Johnny please stand up? Hmm. But I'll ask instead a question that many of us who know that he has more gifts than Santa Claus have wondered about. And instead I asked Johnny, who is the real Johnny and what does he stand for? You want to start with that? We could start with that. That, that is a great way to start. <clears throat> well, you asked about the real Johnny. Well, I wonder sometimes about my own name because it's not my real name. I, I just inherited this name, Johnny by accident. My name is John Relly, but the principal of the primary school to which I attended. He named me Johnny and wrote down Johnny in the roll book. And worse than that, he wrote down Johnny Kuman Singh. And my name wasn't Johnny Kuman Singh, but he assumed that I had a father named Roland Kuman Singh and he wrote down Johnny Kuman Singh. So I, I was stuck with the name. So maybe the real Johnny is somewhere in the cloud, <laughs> you know? But that means so I accepted the name and I went through the world with this name. My name should have been John Aman or John Carmino. And then they named me Johnny Kuman Singh. And when I went for my real birth certificate, you, you know what happened? They changed my name. Because long time people used to make some cursive movements with their pen. And I don't know if it's a curse, but it was a cursive movement. And suddenly my name became Munan Singh. So I said, well, since, my, since I was categorized as illegitimate by the Catholic Church, you know, I kept the name Munan Singh. 
because my father was just an informant on my birth certificate. The point is, I appreciate who I am and I appreciated the name and it doesn't matter who doesn't, but I am Johnny Kuman Singh throughout the world now. They know me as Johnny Kuman Singh. What I stand for really is above all things, I stand for integrity. And that comes with a certain modicum of honesty. They said that honesty is the best policy, but I, I said no. Honesty for me is the only policy. There, there are no superlatives with honesty. If you're honest, you're honest. So that's what I really stand for. And the last thing I want to say in this line is that when I attended the Sangre Grandi Seventh-day Adventist School, there was written on the wall, this teacher used to write things on the wall so that students could read and understand. It said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. <clears throat> and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. And I took that with me throughout life. And Stephen, well, Covey, and Stephen Covey said, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Okay, and we say first to thine old self be true, and it follows like the night the day, thou will be true to any other man. But when we come back to truth, how, what is the relationship between the truth and your work in poetry and in prose? Well, I, I, I write from my heart. I write from my observations and sometimes my perception mightn't be all true because we have five senses and that's how we perceive the world. But I think there is a sixth sense somewhere. And you will make certain observations and then make conclusions about those observations. When I was in, in Trinidad, I, I saw many movies that were sent here by the Americans in terms of the Americans and how the conquest of the, the American continent. And I, and I believe that, you know what they said, that Indians, the Native Americans, were savages. But when I went to America and I, and I sat and I observed, and I said, but these, this place, this environment was Native America. And how come now they are saying it's savage? So we were fed a lot of propaganda. And one of my first books is Show Me Equality. And there I wrote about Native Americans and European Judeo-Christian settlers. And then I said, but these untruths, I mean, it's so false. And I read about the Trail of Tears and the, the, the Battle of Wounded Knee and I mean the battle of Little Big Horn. And I went to those places and I saw things. I said, look at how these people are living now. Why in such decrepit conditions? And I started writing about those things. So I wrote that first book, Show Me Equality. And then the publisher told me, if I pay one more dollar, I'll get to publish another book. So I took the opportunity and though that book was actually my notes that I wrote when I was doing my dissertation on the steel pan instrument. I was doing a kind of geographical study of the steel pan, how it came about, where it came from. It's the, about the, the where and the why of steel pan. 
and a distribution of this instrument that has taken the world by storm. And I, I said, well, let's see what's happening in Trinidad. And I wrote this book, Sweet and Sour Trinidad and Tobago. And the reason why I, I wrote it is about, it ended up on sugar cane. And no matter, because you Tony totally know a lot about sugar cane, right? Um, uh, it ended up on sugar cane and I said that no matter how the sugar cane is bent, the sweetness is still in there. Squeeze it a little bit and you'll get sugar. Yeah. Okay, John, we have just a few more minutes and I wanted to end up uh, on the sugar cane note, um, the sweetness that is still in there. My, my issue, uh, we were talking yesterday about the parable of the talents. And God gives you some talents, and you don't bury them. You try to expand them. You have done a magnificent job so far with the talents you have. But where do you go from here now, Johnny? Where well, next steps of the talent? Well, what I want to do, I want to pass some of that information, some of that profit that I made from the talents spiritual, more spiritual than anything to people, the people who are willing to listen and act on what they get. I can tell you something that I can do almost a little bit of everything except really sew. I, I cannot sew on a machine, but I can make shoes. I can stitch a shoemaker's stitch. I can I look, I'm repairing two guitars here for, for somebody, you know, as a, a part of my style. The point is, where do I go from here? How far can I go? I don't know. I, I, I reach a, a point in life where I check how many more years do I have to live? 10, 20, 30? So I give, I give more and I expect less so that I will not be disappointed. Thank you, Johnny. Well, as one old so and so to a younger <laughs> so, thank you very, very much. Let me hand you over to the Master Simon. Thank you, Tony. We'll have an enjoyable time. Thank you. Thank you, um, Johnny and Tony, you know, this um, interview could have gone on for much longer, but, um, you know, we have a long list of readers. We have people, we have nearly 20 people who will be reading today. And um, I just want to say something here, you know, most of the readers here are all writers in their own way. They have been published, they have their short stories, they have their novels and their magazines. But today we would not um, read out their bios and all that because we want to have everybody reading here. So the next person is somebody that we all know well on poetry and prose. We want to ask Cynthia Birch to read a quattro for Christmas. Come in, Cynthia. Thank you very much. The pleasure is all mine to read these, this lovely piece by Dr. Kumansen. A quattro for Christmas. Some people hung up their guns, some their shoes. I eventually hung up my old quattro. I bought this quattro in 1980. While at a camp in North Dakota, I thought that this quattro needed a rest, although it still has a wonderful voice. It is resting peacefully somewhere in the office of Simon's Music Supplies on St. Vincent Street port of Spain. At least that was the last place I left it. I jog my memory to recall the name of the quattro maker who sold to me this wonderful instrument. I think his name was Mr. Aparicio. All I could recall is that he resided at Alice Street, Arima. It was Christmas week and I sorely needed a quattro. 
Without a decent sounding quattro, Christmas would be similar to the taste of a flat Coca-Cola. Hoping to find a reasonably priced one, I went to the Louis Gilman Thomas Music Store way up on Frederick Street, Port of Spain, to purchase an instrument. To my disappointment, all the less expensive quattros were sold. It was terrifying. The ones that remained were too expensive for the small change I had in my pocket, a paltry $180. I was left in a state of despair. I couldn't think. Quite melancholic, I started walking back to Independence Square. Dejectedly, I began walking to the Sangre Grande taxi stand. Somehow, a little birdie told me to go over to the Janura's clothing store on Queen Street and have a chat with Paul Castillo, one of the founders of the Trinidad and Tobago Parang Association. I explained to Paul my situation, my dilemma. I reminded him that once upon a time, he came to our tiny house with some paranderos from Rio Claro. And yes, he remembered. He then directed me to go to Alice Street, where I would meet the quattro maker who makes the bells of St. Mary. He makes one of the sweetest sounding quattros in Trinidad and Tobago. Without reservation, Paul lauded the work of this wonderful artisan. I hastened my pace to reach to Alice Street. When I arrived, the aging quattro maker greeted me at the door. I told him what I came for and he invited me in. His wife also greeted me and offered me a seat next to her dining table. They were so kind and gentle, two really beautiful people. Without hesitation, the man told me that he had no more quattros for sale, but showed to me his very own quattro. I asked him if he would sell to me this precious instrument. He said that was his personal quattro and that it was not for sale. My heart sank. I pulled out the $180 I had in my wallet and made an offer for the instrument. I really coveted the instrument. He looked at me and shook his head and that shake meant nah. Nevertheless, unbeknownst to me, his wife was in my corner. He said, Giddy boy, the quattro now. You don't even play it anymore. I blurted out, Yes. I instantly reminded him that he could always make one for himself. It seemed that he was not going to crack. This was a special quattro. The back of the instrument was not made of cedar, as were all the other quattros I played. The back of this one was made with a different type of wood. I asked him, mango wood, looking at? He just smiled. $180 was quite a sum of money to pass up in those days. He played a few notes on it for me, and oh, what a tone and resonance. He saw in my eyes how desperate I was. Then he handed the quattro to me. I started to play. He was so impressed that he said, okay, son, you win. You can have the quattro. Can you imagine the joy I felt? I own two more quattros, Sona and Vega de Arapuchi. They are good sounding ones, but every time I look at the bells of St. Mary, I remember the first time I played that sweet and delightful Trini made instrument. I probably have the only quattro left that was made by this great Luthier who lived on Alice Street Arima. There was a time my quattro went missing. After a concert in the auditorium of the Central Experiment Station, Ministry of Agriculture, Centeno, I somehow came home without my quattro that night. That night, I wasn't drunk. Panic struck. Someone had my precious instrument. Then I remembered. My worries subsided a bit, but it took me almost a week before I could go to retrieve my quattro. 
Sometimes such events happen. There are times when a parandero would go out with his cuatro and return home without it. In those days, much value was not applied to such instruments, and when parang time came around, they would have to go buy another quattro. I could not afford to lose the bells at St. Mary. This quattro was too precious, and I was grateful that it was safe. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia, for that um, lovely. Uh, thank you, Johnny, for that lovely story. And thank you, Cynthia, for that lovely read. You know, and um, in keeping with um, Quattro and Christmas, our next reader is Leslie Ann Beckles, and she will read Parang Traditions in Lopino. Take it away, Leslie. Good afternoon, everyone. Parang Traditions in Lopino. Have you ever had a parang band visit your home at Christmas? If you didn't, then there will be a great lack of joy and togetherness that a good parang session transfers. What is Christmas without parang? Here's one of my experiences. One o'clock Christmas morning, I was taken from my home by some paranderos. As a good cultural player, a parandero of sorts I wasn't given the chance to see me. Hitting several homes along the way, we arrived in a tiny village located at Pinto Road, Arima. Here, I was stuck in the parang until 5 p.m. on Christmas Day. The people we entertained with our parang were jubilant and happy. Such an experience I will never forget. In light of Trinidad's development, the Spanish crown ruled Trinidad until the year 1797. Spanish colonization concomitant with the enslavement of the Amerindians saw the civilization of sugarcane, cultivation of sugarcane, tobacco, and animal husbandry on a small scale. During this era, Trinidad was basically a jumping off point to the South American mainland. The South American mainland proved to possess deposits of precious metals and gems. Nevertheless, under the French, the cocoa and coffee industry survived, absorbing labor from the Spanish peons from Venezuela, who imperceptibly transferred their culture to Trinidad, the parallel art form being more prominent. By now, most people in Trinidad recognize that Parang is essentially a Spanish Roman Catholic musical art form. This article briefly examines Parang and its accompanying traditions in the village of Lopinu, the most elevated village in Trinidad. With a population of about 3,000 people, Lopinu exhibits a complex mixture of descendants from Spanish cocopiles, French, Portuguese, Chinese, West African, East Indian, and Amerindian, Carib, most of whom follow the Roman Catholic way of life. The term, par the term parang is derived from the Spanish word paranda, which means a spree or a fete. Initially, it's a group of four or more men who went to give a paranda at an event, a christening or a birthday celebration. However, in Trinidad, parang came to mean the songs that were sung, especially during the Christmas season. What was brought from Venezuela to Trinidad was paranda navidenda, which means Christmas parang. There are two theories about the origins of Trinidad parang. The first is that the custom was brought to Trinidad by Capuchin missionaries during the Spanish occupation of Trinidad from 1498 to 1797. The second theory suggests that the art form came from Venezuela in the 19th century with cocoa piles who came from Orient, Venezuela, to work on cocoa plantations in Trinidad. Whatever its origins, the infectious parang arrived as part of the cultural baggage of the Spanish. The art form is now an integral part of the cultural landscape of Trinidad and Tobago. Sometimes many paranderos go paranging with just a cartoon, a pair of maracas, two tuk tuks, a box, box base, and I have seen in Panama even a dollar. This type of parang, 
Liming occurs in several recognized towns and villages in Trinidad, including Arima, Lopinu, Palaseco, Rio Claro, San Rafael, Santa Cruz, Sandy Grande, Saparia, and Tamano. The official Paran season begins on September 25th and continues to January 6th. Various Parang groups participate in competitions organized by the National Parang Association of Trinidad and Tobago and PAT during this period. Nonetheless, they are Paranderos who Parang way past this closing date. Some years ago, in a little chat with a taxi driver, whom I came to know only as Mr. Vialva, I realized that he played para music in his taxi every day of the year. When asked if people made a fuss about his constant parangi, he said, I don't care who vex about my music. I like parang and I will play the music all day, every day. In terms of gastronomic preferences for the parang season, there will be a lackluster session if the regular parang food is not served. The foods typically found at a parang event at the traditional Christmas fair such foods include pastels, seasoned steamed ground chicken, beef or pork filled cornmeal patties wrapped in banana leaves, empanadas, fresh version of fried version of pastel, pemi, sweet pastel made with corn and grated coconut, sorrel, hibiscus sabderifa, a spicy cider, ginger beer, rum, punch de creme, a type of alcoholic eggnog, babash, home brewed alcohol. Local wild meats are also prepared. For example, brocket de, mazama americana, aguti, despi procata, leporina, lap, puniculus paca, maniku, dedi lefis marisupialis, Tatu or amadillo, Dicepus lenaeus, and iguana, iguana, iguana. Servings at more intimate family gatherings may include homemade bread and ham, roast pork, pilau, stewed yardfowl, or stewed pork accompanied with ground provisions such as cassava, dashing, kushkus, and yam. Sometimes cassava bread and Amerindian tradition is served. With this array of music and food preparations in view, Lopino sees the opportunity to stage the annual La Fiesta de Lopino, aimed at keeping the Parang traditions alive. The Fiesta de Lopino uses the Parang art form as an attraction for citizens far and wide to descend on Lopino for the real thing. Rain or shine, hundreds of people make the pilgrimage to join in the festivities at Lopino. 10 or 12 parang bands will be in attendance, keeping the day bright with music everywhere. Some bands will stop and perform on the street, much to the enjoyment of the people who show up to dance and have a good time. According to Donna Mora, former president of the Lopino Tourist Association, LTA, apart from the other traditional Christmas delicacies, pork is the meat that is sold the most during the fiesta. An all-inclusive traditional favorite of the Lopino people is rupu pork, which is pork colored with coloring made from the seeds of the anato or achiote, the Brixa oriana tree. The effort of Lopino to keep this part of the culture of Trinidad alive is more than remarkable and commendable. Although many of the great paranderos, parang songwriters, and cultural makers have now passed into eternity, the people of Lopino have not abandoned the Spanish Parang traditions. Over the years, they have molded Parang into an event, La Fiesta de Lopino. This activity is holding strong, more than a win-win for the Lopino community and Trinidad as a whole. Thank you, Dr. Kumanzing, for the honor of reading your article. Thank you, um, Johnny, for um, educating us about Parang and Lopino. And thank you, Leslie Ann, for a lovely read. Thank Next, you. we have Wilma Susanka, who will read A Christmas of Nothing. Thank you. 
Yes, Zulma, we are hearing you loud and clear. You can okay, start your video and start reading. Okay, thank you. Hello? Okay, a Christmas of nothing. In almost everyone's experience, there are times when they are up and there are times when they are down. In our house, this was a scenario every day. Christmas time was no exception. Christmas is a time for enjoyment, good food, and the niceties that people look forward to all year long. But when there is nothing with which to celebrate, the joy diminishes like a dying sun in the West. Well, there was a year when our house was dry, dry as the hills of Gilboa, nothing to, ex to be expected, a hardship unmatched. Nevertheless, a hope for a Christmas blessing was always high. We prayed for better times. That year, poverty got the better of us. Food was scarce, and there was always a struggle to meet the monthly payment for rent. At that time, I was attending the Northeastern College, NEC, and part of my education at school included agricultural science. Note well, at NEC, I was very astute regarding my attention to agriculture. I somehow knew that if I understood how to grow food, that I will never grow hungry. I will never be hungry. I love the land. In the school's two acre plot, we cultivated a variety of crops. I spent most of my free time there. As part of the practicum, the school included, involved a few agriculture students in the raising of broiler chickens. I found myself quite engaged in the preparation of the site for the chicken coop. When it was time to erect the building, I was chief cook and bottle washer until we spread the sugarcane baggers for the arrival of the day old chicks. I cannot remember how many chicks we introduced to the coop, maybe 200. Nevertheless, we were given the routine to tend the chickens for eight weeks during the Christmas term. Needless to say, our house promised nothing for Christmas. There was a somber atmosphere of despair and hopelessness. Many factors contributed to our demise, of which I will make no mention. Despite our efforts to plant a kitchen garden, which we hoped would have supplemented a part of our diet. Sad to say, the garden was fraught with failures. Nature wasn't so kind to us that year. The few roots of cassava became infected with a worm that destroyed the, the apical buds of the plants, causing the yields to be quite small. The body, which are asparagus or snake bean, did not bear as expected, but we had okros in abundance. Stretching from the road to the end of the allotment, the, the line of okra trees went crazy with their production. During this time of food scarcity, we ate whatever cassava roots we could have harvested. Almost all of the roots were small, lean, and tiny, but we managed. Complementing the cassava almost every day, we had boiled a common fowl, which are yard fowl, eggs, a few strands of bodhi and boiled okros, seasoned with salt, black pepper, and cooking oil. We followed my mother's mantra, eat little and live long. She also said to us, if you don't want it, sit down by it. We had to make do with what we had. Some of the okros remained and dried on the trees. We collected almost five pounds of dried seeds in that season. Wondering what to do with the dried seeds, someone from the church we attended told my mother to parch the seeds in a pot and grind them to make a kind of possum for us to drink. She did as she was told. And to our surprise, the possum was quite refreshing and tasty. I will never forget the ventures of my mother for us. In the okra seed story, Almost the whole class at the Eastern Caribbean Institute for Agriculture and Forestry laughed at me when I told them about okra tea. The lecturer, concerned about vegetable production, was talking about okra production and asked us what we thought were the uses of okra. 
Everyone knew that the okra is used primarily in the preparation of crab and kala leaf, the national dish of Trinidad and Tobago. No one ever heard about okra tea. In the wake of this new information and ensuing laughter, I was labeled with the name okra tea, at least for a couple of weeks. Returning to my experiences at school, Christmas week came with the receipt of two huge broiler chickens. The chickens were almost seven to eight pounds each. They were nice, healthy birds. My mother was overjoyed with the fact that at least we were having chicken for Christmas. But that was not all. The day before Christmas Eve, after having received permission from Mr. Kevin Branch, my agricultural science teacher, I went up to the school garden to see what I could have uh, found to bring home for Christmas. To my consternation, the dwarf pigeon pea were in full fruit. Pea seeds were planted about three months before. I harvested about 10 pounds of full pods, and that was not all. There was another surprise. Some stray sweet potato vines that were robed from the garden were thrown upon a heap of well-rotted bagasse and vegetables material, literally a compost heap. And those vines, they took root. I noticed that the vines looked a bit shabby and dry, so I ventured to investigate why. Lo and behold, about 18 inches deep in the middle of the compost heap was a nest of what to me looked like huge, smooth, round eggs, light pink in color. I became sort of frightened for a moment until I realized that the extremely fertile conditions of the compost created the optimum conditions for the production of sweet potatoes. This red colored potato was a variety known as 049, a variety developed by the University of the West Indies known as UWE. I removed close to 20 pounds. The school's garden had provided all that we needed to celebrate Christmas, and we were very thankful. I remember quite well the maxim, man's extremity is God's opportunity. Always keep hope alive. What seemed in the beginning to be a drab and dull Christmas, a Christmas with nothing, became a Christmas full of joy, good tidings, and food for all. We will never forget. Never. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vilma. Thank you, Johnny, for that lovely story. And thank you, Vilma, for that lovely read. You know, this Christmas of nothing that became a Christmas of plenty. Okay, moving right along. Um, Afisa Taylor is next. Afisa, are you here? Okay, I'm not seeing Afisa. So we'll move on to Aline Kuyupina, who will read from Grandi to Pinto Road. Aline, come in, please. Aline, would you oh, unmute? I'm on mute. Okay. I'm good. You're okay now. You're okay now. Okay. Okay. I'm scratching my head, but I can't remember the year. But that, but with that, you have to be. Anyhow, I remember the time them fellas from Wasa take me on a parang line. It was Christmas Eve night, and I put my head down on my pillow and switch off the light. Then I hear a quattro, a box bass, and a marak. I wasn't dreaming, so I roll over on my back. One o'clock in the morning, them fellas come lagway in a corridor with a glorious song. I have no choice. I had to rub my eye to play my quattro, and I didn't have to try. Sweet, sweet parang in a narrow corridor. Sweet, sweet alginado just outside my door. I throw on my clothes and I invite them in and I take up my quattro and I start to sing. We sing a love way in with my Ava, my sister and my cousin Larry. Valencia was the next stop to make people merry. One parandero had a nasty tabanka, crying for no reason while shaking his maracas. He said he girl left him for nothing at all. And then he start to pong his hand, he hand against the wall. But the fellas tell him, don't mind that. She go come back to you like a stray away cat. 
He felt a little better, although he bust up behind. It was Christmas time, parang and rejoicing across the land. We end up in Pinto Road in a squatter settlement and brought the joy of Christmas the Savior sent. The love in Pinto Road among the simple and poor was more than enough as we serenaded from door to door. The smell of new linoleum and the smiles I will never forget. They were some of the happiest people I ever met. Yes, from Sandy Grandy to Pinto Road to spread the love related in Parang about the peace that came from above. So many people made happy on that Christmas day. Today and forever, let the sweet, sweet Parang continue to play. Thank you so much, Johnny. This was an honor. Thank you. Thank you, Aline, and thank you, Johnny. You know, it's a lovely change from from um, storytelling to poetry and um, in dialect too. So congratulations, Johnny. Okay, so our next reader is a good friend of um, Johnny, Indrani Dial. Go ahead, Indrani. Season's greetings, everyone. This is a poem by Johnny called In Our House. And the first book I read by Johnny was Seven, Day, Seven Years on Adventist Street. And it's a really inspirational and deeply moving story because it covers his early years and how he overcame adversity to get where he is. In our house, we explore the bush, you and me, to fetch a branch for a Christmas tree. Guava, black sage, cassiorina, whatever it be, covered with cotton wool, snow, thing of beauty. In our house, we scrub and clean and polish. There's a smell of paint and varnish. The scent of Christmas greets the air. The season of joy has come. It's here. In our house, fresh new curtains hung all about. Merry Christmas, we will shout. A day waited for all year long. Let's come together in a Christmas song. In our house, although so poor, we lay new linoleum on the floor. Renew the bed sheets and pillowcases. Welcome always, friends, with smiling faces. In our house, the Christ child is lifted high. The Lord our God is always nigh. Never forget, always remember that Jesus came as our precious Savior. In our house, there is a song in the air sorrel, fruitcake, and ginger beer. Aroma of cinnamon, sage, rosemary, and thyme, and the turkey soaking in a bucket of brine. In our house, joy to the world, the Lord has come, the spirit invited home. Come, let us adore him, rest a while from the noisy din. In our house, there is no fuss. Come in, sup with us. Thank you. Thank you, Indrani. Thank you for that lovely read. Thank you, Johnny, you know. And my wish for all of us here today is that we have a similar experience in our own houses for this Christmas. Okay, and the next reader we have here, our one of our youngest reader, Shahira Ali, who will read Crying at Christmas Time. Come in, Shahira. Hello, everyone. Now, this afternoon, I will be reading this piece entitled Crying at Christmas Time by Dr. Johnny Kuman Singh. Let's begin. Loneliness is a hell of a thing, especially at Christmas time. I say loneliness, but it could mean more than just that. There were people around, but it did not matter. I attended Christmas parties, but for me, no one was present. There was noise, people speaking and laughing, music playing, but I heard nothing. My friends had no idea what I was going through. Not being in the environment that you prefer 
not being around the people you want to be with, not hearing the music you choose to hear, not smelling the food you are accustomed to, not seeing the hustle and bustle to make everything right for Christmas Day, and not feeling the Christmas breeze in your own country could rip your mentality to shreds. Missing home is like a wasting leprous disease. Luckily, at least I had my faithful quattro, four stringed instrument with me. Two weeks before Christmas day, I found myself lying on my bed with tears streaming from my eyes. I did not know how or why I found myself in this state. The sobs were automatic. I could not control the flow. Nevertheless, there I was, strumming some chords and singing every parang song I knew. At that moment, I just wanted to be home. Through the subs and tears, I was still able to create a song titled No Harm. The lyrics came easily because I saw in my mind's eye what normally happens at Christmas time and I laughed with tears in my eyes. Unfortunately, there was no one to shake the maracas, no one to play the box bass, and no one to knock the tok tok. In such a mess, I was inconsolable, probably depressed. Why did I stray so far up north to North Dakota, where Trinis are totally absent from the landscape? I felt the tyranny of time and distance, and I definitely felt the separation from home. It was as though my mind, my soul, and my spirit were slowly dying. Some people refer to such feelings as tabanka. Yes, this unrequited love for one's homeland, food or lover. In my case, there wasn't any lover or any curry tabanka as rendered by the mighty Trini. It was just my dire need to come and hug up my country at Christmas. Despite the crime, corruption, gun toting, drug running, and banditry that has overpowered the land, I still longed to be home. Stuck in a prison without walls or iron bars, I was constantly looking for a way out. My profession as a geographer brought me to North Dakota, but sometimes going too far from home could be a mental disaster. As in my case, my crying days are over. Now I am back home. Now I could say as the mighty shadow, are you feeling the feeling? Although the real cold snow and ice are not around, and we do not hear sleigh bells ringing, or see Santa Claus taking a dive in someone's chimney, I will always say, oh, there's no place like home for the holidays. Because no matter how far away you roam, when you pine for the sunshine of a friendly gaze, for the holidays, you can't beat home 
sweet home. And that's it for me on today's episode of Poetry and Prose. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you, Shahira. And um, I'm so happy to have um, <laughs> Johnny, Dr. Johnny Kuman sing back in Trinidad so he can um, enjoy his Christmas and enjoy his ham. So Johnny, don't mind you, um, you had to stay in that cold, far away place. I say, no harm in that man, but it's good to have you back. Okay, and our next reader is Johnny's good friend, uh, somebody I shouldn't have to talk about. His name is Tony Real, and we all know this talented punster. Tony, the floor is yours. This poem is Christmas Migration. And there rose a cry a cry of sorrow. In Rama was there a voice heard for some tiny ones, no tomorrow. In Bethlehem, lamentation, weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children. Rachel cried out in pain, God have mercy. In grief, never to be comforted. Her children slaughtered, streets stained with blood. There was no God. The children are not spoken of Jeremy, the prophet, or oh, the rot. An emperor so devilish, so rabid. In the city of David, a madman, full of hate, a lunatic wrought. The horror of the sword. And yet, the living word escaped on a donkey in his mother's arms. By night, he fled to another place, a better place, a place secure, a place of providence, to suckle in peace for he, our Lord, was not to be murdered by a power hungry freak for sure. All of us will miss one day, life still, the monarch faded, gone. For out of Egypt have I called my son. And then we turn our gaze to modern pages. We see our children locked in cages, defenseless, yet hoping, crying for freedom by the rock of ages. Oh, the horror, while the lady weeps in the harbor. Thank you. Thank you, Tony, for that um, wonderful, awesome performance. Okay, um, are you hearing me? To me? Yes, um, thank you, Tony, for that awesome performance. You know, you're, you're just like our stage manager. You know, you all they take, up, take our show up and not your two. So thank you again. And um, it's a wonderful tribute there to Johnny. Okay, our next uh, reader is Dr. Frank Mohan, coming in from Canada somewhere in the cold. <laughs> and Frank will be reading, Behold the Child of Joy. Come in, Frank. <clears throat> well, Tony Dial has certainly set the, the bar uh, much higher. Uh, first of all, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. And it's my honor to read this poem by Dr. Johnny Comanzing. Behold the child of joy. To the city of David, come. Come with me. 
to Bethlehem. Come with me to the stable. Come. Be quiet in your soul. Come see the savior of the world lying wrapped in swaddling clothes. Come see the precious little baby. Some say that he come from the glory. Some say he came to fulfill the story that man will live forevermore. Come, taste the water of life. Come, forget the worry and the strife. Come see a man, she said. Come with the bread of life. Be fed slowly, slowly walk, humbly kneel. It's the savior. He is what's real. Feel his power in your heart. Let him comfort you. Just, just yield. Come find yourself in a quiet place. Come and look into his face. Touch him. Hold him. Know his tenderness from within. And we know his future, what it will be. Come to carry us, to carry for us across to Calgary. Give up your ramblings and rage. Gaze upon his visage. Just gaze. Let him heal. Make you smile for the first and every other mile. It's Christmas because of Mary's boy. Come, behold, it's the child of joy. And that's by Dr. Johnny Comanzing. Thank you, Frank. Uh, you certainly did justice to that. And um, as one doctor to the other, you and Johnny, you know, thanks for um, sharing with us and thanks for contributing to our program. Our Thank next speaker is Zorina Shah, and she's going to read a poem, Is It So Difficult? Zorina. Thank you. Greetings to all of you. Um, Dr. Kuman Singh, I was actually given my Christmas poem. But although I didn't mind the Angostura products, I thought I might end up salivating over the ham. So I asked for it to be exchanged. Um, I am doing, is it so difficult? Oh, also before I start, I want to give a shout out to Tony Dial. 40 years ago, we were on opposite sides of the industrial relations fence. Right, so this poem is, is it so difficult to walk a weary road, to help with another's load? Is it so difficult to accept a humble stable, to see a straw-lined cradle? Is it so difficult to be born in a manger, to come to his own and treated as a stranger? Is it so difficult? to walk the second mile, to be slapped and still smile. Is it so difficult to acknowledge the poor, to welcome the homeless at your door? Is it so difficult to accept loss, to bear the cross? Is it so difficult to love your friends, your buddies, to love as well your enemies? Is it so difficult to stay the utter of the hateful world, to know vengeance is mine, thus said the Lord? Is it so difficult to live without fear or favor, to simply love your neighbor? Is it so difficult to right all wrongs, to sing a lifting song? Is it so difficult? to walk the thorny path, to give with a cheerful heart? Is it so difficult to see your reflection in your savior's face, to experience only his saving grace? Is it so difficult? Thank you. Thank you all for the privilege of reading at this session. Thank you, um, Zorina. Always a pleasure having you here. You know, 
you have been one of our most loyal members and um, I just want to uh, echo oh, Johnny's sentiment. Lawyer. <laughs> Is it so yeah. difficult to spread a little Christmas cheer, you know? I think that we should make a special effort to give a little to the less fortunate in these seasons, especially these um, venues who are living among us and who are in need. Okay, so our next reader would be Hari Charan Narayan. Hari, come in, please. Hari, I think you're muted, you know. Okay, are you hearing me now? Loud and clear, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I have before me here a poem by um, Dr. Johnny Comancing or Dr. John Comancing. It's entitled The Lighthouse. Upon a rock, one chilly day, I gaze amidst the misty haze at a lighthouse firmly built. In its magnificence, it stood so proud above the lake through storm and cloud, for many a ship, a beacon of salvation. Penetrating the mists in the years gone by, hope and gladness for a sailor's eye. Now lightless in its beauty, a place defunct. And then to an era past, I jog my mind, and inside therein a lighthouse fine, still reaching out with beams so bright. If we all could go back to the lighthouse there to lend a hand, a ray of hope with others share at Christmas and every day. For Jesus is a lighthouse built upon the rock that shines forever to clear away the mire, the muck of hate and scorn among the flock. Begin today to let your lighthouse shine. Don't wait for Christmas as the only time. For in the mist, there are sailors and ships. I was wondering, that's the end. I was wondering if Johnny Kumansing is any relationship to Dr. David Kumansing. But I just wanted to add something. If you don't, if you can't enjoy your own company, you are in bad company. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you, Harry, for bringing life to that piece of writing. You know, um, it's so easy what Johnny writes for us to interpret. Okay, so our next reader would be Gosha Mahabir. Gosha, are you with us? Hi, yes, I'm here. Okay, and Gosha would be doing Christmas lights. Hi, okay, Christmas lights. Everywhere I look, I see the lights, lights of Christmas to brighten the night, the night of hopelessness, fair, big corporations do not care. Yet we buy their lights by the bundle. Nobody hears the economic rumble. House foreclosures, people bawl and wail while heartless companies ask for money bail. By rail, by truck, by car, to Washington we go leave corporate jets behind the feds must never know that we eat caviar and drink champagne keep the poor man on the money stream and the little man the paltry little man could never understand the horrible plan how one man in one year makes 21 million while he for gas pays $4 a gallon. Terry died, he hopes for the Christmas lights. Broken, he struggles with all his might to clothe and feed 
his little girls and boys fill their stockings with plastic toys. And somewhere on a track in my mind, one rode a donkey so gentle and kind, the king of lights, yes, of peace and joy, Mary's precious little baby boy. The child of light is what we all need, truth and sincerity, not mingled with greed. Seek him, find him, ye of Abraham's seed. T'was for you he in sorrow did bleed. My brother, my sister, may you find and share that light. And that's, thank you for allowing me to read. I really enjoyed this piece. You're muted. <laughs> Thank you, Gosha. You know, but we miss seeing your pretty face, you know. <laughs> um, before we go along, I'm um, go on the resume. Um, Johnny, are you here with us? Because I've just asked Johnny that you know we take a little break and um yeah, yes, um yes, and, Moji, are you hearing me? Loud and clear, Johnny. So before we bring on Vishnu. Johnny is going to entertain us with a bit of parang and maybe a Christmas song. So wish if you stand by a bit, um, we'll have Johnny doing some entertainment. No, thank you. Okay. Um, this this song. I don't know. I, I live in Valencia now. And um some years ago, I heard a tune like this, but I had put some words to it now. So it's about my experience on the Valencia stretch. So I'll give, I'll give you a little, a little thing here. The kind of parang thing. Up the grandy for the Christmas. The road have a hole in Valencia. The road have a hole in Valencia. How that hole come day, nobody cannot say. How that hole come day, nobody cannot say. I was going up to Grandy for the Christmas. I was going up to Grandy for the Oh, that 
That's it. The road have a hole in Yeah, but Johnny, thank you, you know, but um, one of the traditions of, of Christmas is the parang singing. But when I was growing up, we had our other tradition. What? We used to say, when you take a drink, you can't stand up on one foot. Oh. So you can't stand up on one foot. You have to give me a next thing. Oh, God. <laughs> you want our next thing? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you this one. Okay, so people in the chat, do we want the next thing? <laughs> yes, Johnny, overwhelming, overwhelming. We want the next thing. All right, okay, I'll get our next thing. This is what a partner is a kind of make believe makeup partner named Santo. And Santo and me is apparent every Christmas, but this year, the man passed my house straight. So I say, well, why this man passed out? I know why he do that. So. Aha. Santo do pass. Let me get it right. Let me get it right code. Santo do pass. Do pass my house. Do pass my house when you're para. I'm begging, don't pass my house, don't pass my house, don't pass my house, ring the gas. I'm begging, don't pass my house, don't pass my house, let me parang on Christmas Eve. I go play the bells of St. Mary, just come and parang by me. I have a partner named Santo. We used to parang wherever we go. He does sing, I could ask we now do. Why he leave out the house, me and all. He used to parang by me every Christmas. Parang till four day morn. I don't know if he wanted some sauce. But last year he leave out the house. So do pass me house, do pass me house, do pass me house when you're far I'm begging do pass me house, do pass me house, do pass me house, bring the gas. I'm begging do pass me house, do pass me house, let me far on Christmas Eve. I go play the bells of St. Mary. Just come and parang by me. I know he parang so toro. He went to sing for Rudolfo. But he come by the lime in Lofino. Oh, I live out my house, me and all. I know he live in right day dong in Pinto. I squat in right day dong by Locho. No fans, no dog, I have a hook me yard. No parang by me in the heart. You come, you parang Valencia. You pass me to reach to Arima. I hear you when Palo Seco. Why you leave out the house, me and all? Santo boy, I have this longing. The love way with you, I must sing. I have some pastel, a good pot of song. So come and parang me up. A old and feeble and real poor. A piece of string, just tie up my door. Right next door, you're parang by Puerto. Then you sing over the by Portillo. I know the song of your quattro, the one you buy from my Paris, yo. I sit down and wait till the cock crow, I you leave out the house, me and no. Santo, do pass the house, do pass the house, do pass the house when you're para. 
I beg it, don't pass my house. Don't pass my house. Don't pass my house, bring the gas. I'm crying, don't pass my house. Don't pass my house. Let me fire and on base my team. I'll play the bells of St. Mary. Just come and parang by me. I will play the bells of St. Mary. Just come and parang by me. That is Santo. Ay, 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 talented um, Johnny Kuman Singh, you know, poet, short story writer. Okay. And Alan Darrow. That's funny. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, Johnny. And moving right along. Right. Moving right along, we have um, um Hugo sign. What was I going to tell you? Yeah. They had people before reading parts of excerpts from his books and name. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, moving right along, we um, Vishnu Gosain would um, read for us. No, let Christmas be. Go ahead, Vish. Okay, uh, are you hearing me now? Loud and clear, Vishnu, loud and clear. Sorry for having you standing by there, but um, I think it was worth your okay. journey. <laughs> I'm not seeing myself. <laughs> okay. Right. So the poem I'm going to read is called Let Christmas Be by Dr. Johnny Kuman Singh. Merry Christmas to all. Let Christmas be every day of the year. Let Christmas be smiling children without a tear. Let Christmas be tables full of joy, enough for every girl and every boy. Let Christmas be a moment in my heart of peace, of love, of joy, right from the start. Let Christmas be the feeling to be with friends. Let Christmas be carols when our voices blended. Let Christmas be the story of our Lord and Christ who became the ultimate sacrifice, born in a manger, and yes, to his own people, a stranger. Let Christmas be the time to care and share let Christmas be the time to offer a prayer for those who fight for freedom with the hope for peace in an everlasting kingdom. Let Christmas be the season to purge the hate from our souls, offer to God a clean slate, where the spirit could write the law of love, emerge as a new receptacle filled from above. Let Christmas be freedom from the hagglers, bartering goods to the hurried, and the stragglers. Let Christmas be richer, a time to store good deeds of faith and open eye towards the poor. Let Christmas be a time for humankind to rest the weary, tired mind, to ponder on the blessings of life so free. It is high time we just let Christmas be. So that's my poem, Let Christmas Be by Dr. Johnny Kumanse. Thank you for allowing me to read, Doc. All the best. <clears throat> Thank you, Vishnu. And um, that was a lovely read. And you know, we all come here today because this is our last meeting for the year. And um, we're so happy to share this uh, Christmas spirit and um, Johnny's poem and Johnny's book have uh, certainly have us, um, you know, putting us in the Christmas spirit. Thank you again. Um, okay, um, our next reader would be Krishna Samaru, who was, you know, earlier he was talking about, um, he um, spent some time down in Grandi and he and Johnny have some mutual acquaintances. So maybe we could talk a little bit about that and then Krishna could, um, <laughs> you know, read the, his, his piece, which is too hurry. Okay. Krishna, the floor is yours. Hold on, I'm dogs barking there. 
Honestly, if I could be. Casey, just attend to the dogs, please. Right. <laughs> That's a commercial. Um, congrats. No, I don't know. I, we, I, I grew up in Sandy Grandi. I spent some time in Grandi. But um, I know Adventist Road. Um, it's nice to have a, a fellow Grandi person featured in as author of the month in this um, forum, Poetry and Pro. So congratulations, Johnny. Uh, the multi-talented Johnny Day, as we just heard, singing his parang. Um, Johnny Day, the, 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 what, the bells of Christmas, the bells of St. Mary, the bells, you have it? The bells of St. Mary is actually a quattro, you know. Uh -huh. Yes, I know, you have it? Or... The one I had bought from Aparicio in um, Alice Street in Rima. Yes, yes, um, I, I was listening to the... Uh, Oh. Yes, that quattro is now in um well I left Five it months. that side. So to put it up there as a kind of memento. Uh, oh whatever. okay. Good. So that you'll have that there because I don't want that quat quattro to be destroyed ever. Right. So that's probably the last one that that guy made. Yes, yes. I, yes. I left it in the music store. I hope he has it in a safe place. I was him I was by Simon's the other day, you know. <laughs> if uh, I had known I would have checked it out. <laughs> All yeah, right. but I, I I was um I grew up in Grandi related to um you know Pioneer Pharmacy, Coban. Coban, yes, yes. I know Coban. Yes, yes. You related um, there? Yeah. Coban's yeah. wife was my aunt, my okay. mother's sister. Right, and right. Lady Aman and all of them who used to cut here and take down the barbers. Uh -huh. Yeah. I went to St. Francis, Kunapo, I was seeing. Oh, right, right there. Yes, Briley Street, Street there. Briley Street, right. But oh, wow. um, when I was in common entrance class, I came back um, to Belmont and I never went back. Uh -huh. From Belmont, I stayed in um, Porter Street. So, so you were there when Telesford ran down? Uh, yeah, or... Telly Belly. Telly Not Belly, Telesford, yeah. Telly Belly. Telly Belly yeah. Used to call him Telly Belly. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Wow. And but Mr. Tune. Nice, huh? That was nice. Yeah, Mr. Tune and uh, I remember Mr. Tune, he cut the tail good for, yes, for coming true. late. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Mr. Tune, correct? Tune, yes, yes, yes. Mr. Tune. Yes. Yeah, cut the tail for <laughs> coming to school <laughs> late. We pitching Marble Boy right next to you know, yeah. by um, Pandit Narayan. Pandit Narayan. Wait, wait, wait. Karim, Karim Tiwari. I met him. Tiwari. He he's a pundit. He, yeah. I, I know Narayan. Yes, yes, yes. Nareen. Right. We grew up at Nareen. Right, right. Right. It's a yeah. block. Same block. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. So, that is a nice preamble. Um, so, um, we have had poems before, uh, and we, these poems, the poems that we heard before, um, we have the verse where he used verse. This one, um, Johnny is using free verse. It's um, to hurry is the name. So, so it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere you go. Johnny, I put in that <laughs> holly hanging, bells chiming, mall hopping. Everyone appears to be smiling, even those who never smiled before. <laughs> While all year long, we never stop to look at the destitute, the poor who come to our door. And there she was, sitting on the last treader in the stairwell I descended, with hands outstretched, begging, begging without looking me in the eye, hoping that I will drop in her hand a few coins, coins that I may never spend. Yes, her harrowed face stained with worry, her hair unkempt, sitting there pleading with the public, pleading with me, perhaps for a morsel of bread. And I passed. I just passed her as though she did not exist. 
I managed a glance. The thought came to investigate her need, her sore need, but I was too hurried, too hurried to keep. And now I jog my mind to the very moment, the very scene, the nuance that expired at the instant. My conscience plagues me now like a nasty curse. Will I ever see her again? To make up for my error, to give her of my purse? Sitting there hoping, probably praying for some soul to have mercy. Sitting there she was, languishing in anguish on the step in the stairwell. How could I be so crass, so callous? Why so uncaring? Why so inconsiderate about someone who was so in need of me? How do I forgive myself? Hmm. Now Christmas is here, great. And I think of the tree, the decorations, the carols, the nice food, the parang, the presents. Hmm. What will she have? And what do I have to be joyous about? Will I enjoy Christmas? Should I rejoice in the celebration of the one who came to save us from our sins? from my sins, my lack of conscience, my lack of love and kindness, for I am so wretched and undone. Oh dear Lord, too hurry, oh so hurry to care. Let me ask all your question. Do you feel this way sometimes? Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Poetry and Poets. Thank you, Krishna. That indeed is a very relevant question. Are we too hurry to give a bit? Let's just slow down for this Christmas time and share what Why the and level of poverty, uh, Natasha, just hold on. Why? The level of poverty is so uh, horrible and eh? just plain horrible in this. You see people standing in the middle of the road you see them with signs you what you mentioned the venues um people with their babies people with toddlers they're tugging at their heartstrings all i have papa is just some um, loose singles i have stashed away in there the pocket of my car when i pass and i happen to come out alongside them i pass a dollar uh, perhaps if I were any lot, I could pass a little more. Okay, thanks. Yes, um, and that indeed is a good message and a good thing for us to follow. And now we have our stage manager and poetry and prose number one performer. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Natasha would be doing go back to the stable. Mm. Thank you. And thank you, Dr. Kuman Singh, for allowing us the opportunity to read your work. <clears throat> Taking it back a little bit. Go back to the stable. Born in a stable, a manger for a cradle, a bed of straw, so humble, so poor, toiling at the carpenter's table. Many today treat as a fable, bearing my burden, so don't trodden. Forgiven every time. He, the Mount of Olives climbed. No bed, no pillow for his head. He made the blind man see and supplicated for you and for me, giving bread to the hungry, trudging up the road to Calvary, speaking the sweet and sincere word, fought not with sticks and a sword, taking my sorrow, promising a brighter, 
tomorrow? I know you know the answer for every question. I know the struggle for your tongue to mention. I know that you are busy with the familiar institution. I know of the preparation for the Christmas tradition. Forget the mall. Go back to the stable. Dig, search, find the recipe to be humble. Turn around. Go back to the place. See the peace, the glory in your Savior's face. He came for you. Don't you know his voice? He will sup with you. Is it your choice? It was all about you from the very beginning. Come, rest, sip from his blessed fountain. And there we have, go back to the stable, taking it down a notch, a little pensive, but very well written. Thank you, Dr. Kuman Singh. And thank you, Natasha, for um, that uh, powerful message, you know. And um, you know, you're the messenger, and the message is coming from Johnny. Thank but you. indeed, the message that is a message of Christmas, a message of the Christ that we should all pay heed to. Um, before I um, go to the next reader, you know, um, Tony, I sent a message for you. Are you hearing me? Tony, are you yeah, hearing yeah, 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 you got me. Yeah, Tony, um, some of our readers didn't turn up today so that we might have a little time. So I, uh, we heard about the real journey earlier. So I don't know after I do my piece now, if you could uh, do a little bit of putting both you and Johnny on the spot, if you could hear a little bit about Johnny. Problem. Right now. Not, a, not a problem at all. Okay, so after I read this piece, we will hear about Johnny the writer. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So now um, I want to do this piece that um, Johnny calls a real Trini Christmas. All year long, a pain chin for me arm. Look at my clothes. I have no pitch oil pan. Living in town, I can't put my hand on three big stones. Confusion commits. I can't call me tanty. They caught my phone. So I decide to spend Christmas in Sangre Grande. Up there, they have plenty sorin and plenty rock and moby. Sweetest parang, sweet bread, black cake, pastel and sauce. Yes, believe me, you could go and eat in anybody's house. So I taught my ham and I dress up in my Sunday best. I had to make it a grandy by Christmas Eve day. To drink a punch of cream on Christmas Eve night. Nothing better than that. With a link, Angostura, you must get it right. Campo and them fellas playing to bust me bar, planning to bust me bar. I hear they coming from Manzan, Vega, Tamana, from near and far. I shine up my quattro and I get some rum and tighten the string. All I'm waiting now to do is a lave to sing. When I reach Konapo on Christmas Eve day, people busy, busy, busy. So I get out of the way. Some still shopping in city, well, city mall. We foot, mama, yo. Some of them women still looking for right horse planting from quite toko. They no painting the step. Oh, my lad. What? They still cleaning the yard? Some drilling hole to hang a curtain. Some go lose their mind today. That is for certain. So Christmas come and Christmas gone. Everybody tired, the Lego, Lego lying down. I tell myself homemade bread, 
sorrel and a slice of ham, I go eat and drink, and then I go jam. Let them sleep, let them sprawl out on the, let them sprawl out on the precious polished floor. You think I worry about that? Man, close the door. I go on back up with a spade to see the lights on the Brahma, Brian Lara promenade. It's real nice on Christmas night. My family eat down my ham, but I have the bone. On Boxing Day, the soup is mine and mine alone. And when the soccer start to blast, you had to get in gear. And even along the corner, just after we celebrate the new year. Thank you, Johnny, for the opportunity to read that piece. Okay, and now um, we wrap the spotlight, Johnny and Tony, who um, will talk about Johnny, the writer. Go ahead, Tony. Christmas morning, I wake up early to see what Santa Claus brings for me. He bring a police in a short pants with a warrant <laughs> from me for wife maintain. And Johnny, what he bring for you, eh? <laughs> Why? Where you get that song from? Uh, one of my, one of my, my, my favorites. Boy, that's a nice song, boy. Yeah, well, long time when I was a, a little boy, you know, <clears throat> I see something I want. I see something I want in that store. <clears throat> and when I woke out the the amount of money that little Chinese made binoculars. I wasn't interested in gun and thing and, you know, as a little boy. I was interested in science. So I wanted these binoculars to watch the moon, you know, to go and look at the moon and thing. And I prayed for this thing. You know how much it would? It was worth 25 cents US. And, you know, I didn't know if I was going to get it or if, because we were so poor, 25 cents was a lot of money for my mom. Stilling. But I, I, I got it. She, she made the sacrifice and she bought it for me. And after that, I started looking into microscopes. And that is what pushed me to do biology and agricultural science and health science and all these things. And I didn't fail any of my exams. So at least she invested in some little thing for me for Christmas. That is what I got. And after... Well, uh, no, continue, sorry. Yeah. And after that, you know, whatever she bought for me was like a pair of shoes to go to school and so on. What she could have afforded. But I had written a, I had written a poem. I think you have a copy of the poem, you know. Um, trial, trial, trial by shoes. <laughs> remember it. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah, and I ended up in Northeastern College after all that trouble and whatever. My father left my mother with nine of us. He went to England, never looked back. And the day he left, the, well, the night he left, the next day, there was a policeman and a bailiff by the door waiting to evict us. And we were evicted and we were actually put on the street. A mother with baby in arms and eight other children. But we survived. And I ended up wearing my great aunt's shoe, a, a kind of rubber shoe with some, it didn't have eyelets, you know, it's made out of the rubber. And I, I saw trouble, but every time I got to the standpipe up on um, Ojo Road, near to the hospital, I had to wet down my foot because the shoe was hot. And I said in that poem that I was wearing battery socks. You know where battery socks? Mm -hmm. 
it sucks that it keep running down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that that was a that was a story by itself. Excuse me a little bit. Let me plug in this thing because the, the battery going going low here. I think they will call them shoes ballerina, you know, Tony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. that, was, that was a ballerina. <laughs> it was a ballerina, not a good shoe. Yeah. But Johnny. Yeah. Um, I, like, I, I like that about the stocks. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah. I, what I, you know, I know, I know Moti you know, like, have his own thing and all of that. But we've had a nice evening. Good line. And maybe you could pull back on the quattro and have everybody join us and join you. And I will start, I want a piece of pork. I want a piece of pork. I want a piece of pork for me Christmas. I don't want no color, you could keep your money. I want a piece of pork for the Christmas. Okay, you're here, you get it. You yeah. take us, take us wrong, take it and go. I want no money cool. I want a piece of pork for me Christmas. That's a lovely hand coming to the house. Let me go to another one. Let's go to another one. Let's go to another one. Let's go to another one. When they lock up Chocolingo, this is what, uh, yeah, yeah, this one. When they lock up Chocolingo, Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Prospero año y Feliz Navidad. I want everybody. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Okay, it's all yours now, guys. Take it away, Moti. Okay, um, thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Tony. It was um indeed a pleasure having you here. It was an honor that you honored us to, uh, you know, let us feature your work. And I'm going to put Tony on a spot here right now in front of everybody. Yeah, Tony, put I it. hope that we could do this with some of your writings sometime in the next year. What do you say? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's something we had planned, but you have to remember that I'm also part of my Trinidad yesterday, today, tomorrow, which both of you are part of. So what I would like to see is a combination of our my Trinidad people and some of the people who are part of your group get together and we, we, we work together on this because we're all one family. All right. right, so that um, well, me and Johnny go work on that. I find me and Johnny just work good together. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're doing good. We're doing good together. Okay, so um, I, I, I'm very happy and pleased, and I was totally excited about this program. And um, at one point, you know, there was a kind of lump in my throat. You know. Johnny. It, it it was very moving for me. You know, it brought back a lot of memories way back when. And um, that's the reason why I write. Because I could look at my life and the lives of my siblings and everybody else who was in the environment. And I could write and, you know, I could feel this thing. You know, crying at Christmas was, was a major deal. Yes, yes. But the 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 um Christmas of nothing. Yes. Indeed. We must always we must always remember where we came from. Yes. Because and I aspire to move on from that point, but never forget, never forget your roots. 
Coming from uh, the let me let me let me end with one oh. other thing, Johnny. Just because we two gone in deep in this thing, I will end with to you with something that I heard from my partners in Port of Spain when Chocolingo get make a jail. Police must be mad. Police must be mad. Police must be mad to lock up Choco in Trinidad. <laughs> that's great. That's great. I have to remember that one. That's real great. But this is a wonderful program. I mean, not because you all celebrated me or anything or the book or whatever, but it was a really nice time. And, the, and the readers, uh, the readers, I mean, they, they, they read with such feeling and a certain kind of impetus that, you know, I say, well, 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 don't talk about you, Tony. You, you are an actor. You, you are an actor. I mean, I will have you read that poem again sometime. When you come down by me, you got to read that poem. I'll do that. That, that was a real, real performance, you know. Well, that's and, the name of the game, and I'm willing to I didn't know you went through for that. And, and uh, in Drani, I mean, having read that poem maybe for the first Wonderful. time, is actually how I felt. Yes. In our house, she expressed the sentiments that I had in a, in a really nice way. So everybody did well. Samaru, you know, that, that is one of my favorite poems. The um, Tuhari, one of my favorites. So Motila, thanks very much for, I mean, your interest in my work and the, the people who participated and so on. Sorry that the others didn't come. Yeah, but um, thank you, Johnny Julia. But well, it's all a, a teamwork. We have a nice team here at um, Poetry and Prose, and we're always willing to, you know, partner with other groups. We do partner regularly with um, Virtual Story Time, of which Natasha oh, yeah. and Leslie Natasha, are. Yeah. Yes, and um, I don't know, again, I like to put people on the spot, you know. I think I'm going to send out some of your poems to Natasha so that we can use it on virtual story time from time to time. I hope um, I didn't put you on a spot, but are you going to do that? Yeah, yeah, you can do that. I, that is no problem. I have a book I'm writing now. Um, the name of the book is, uh, let me tell you. Mm. That is, mm. a, is a story book. It's a it's, it's like really nice story. And just to interject, um, on behalf of Virtual Storytime, we would love to have your stories over at FRCC's Virtual Storytime, where we highlight local authors, poets, and writers. Good. So Natasha has promised I will be sending Johnny's stories and poems that I have to Leslie Ann and to you. All right, good. Um, nice. One other thing before we close, um, Johnny, you want to just put in a little plug for our program on um, a little advertisement for our program on January 14th? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, um, we will send you the, the, the Zoom link for that program in, in a little later on, but we are honoring, I mean, Tony Dial for his years of work and writing and training and everything at the Debe Library on the 14th of January, 2023. So we want to let you know that we will be presenting him with a trophy, a specially made trophy for him. And, and um, we think that the, the Writers Guild of my Trinidad yesterday, today, and tomorrow, the whole bunch of us, we feel so proud of him as the founder of my Trinidad that we thought it nice and wonderful to honor him in that respect. So on the 14th of January at 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Daybay Library, Okay, I will be emailing everybody with an invitation and, and um, the details. Right. So once more, Johnny, thank you. Tony, thank you. Indrani, thank you very much. I really love your reading. And all the members of Poetry and Prose and all the guests. We have some guests here who 
I want to say thanks because I think we had a wonderful program and this was a wonderful way to end the year. So yeah. from poetry and prose, Christmas greetings to everybody and leave the floor open for anybody who wants to say anything. No. It seems that um, my former mentor in university, when we were professors together, he lives in Ireland. Uh, he just said, wonderful program. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Good. yeah, thank that you, was, Casey. That yeah. was the fancy name I see there that I couldn't pronounce. Yeah, it, it's uh, Steve, <laughs> Steve Hunicky. That's, um, he has a German name, but he is part <laughs> Irish. He has, he has part Irish. I'm, not, I'm a citizen of Ireland now. <laughs> He's a citizen of Ireland, right? <laughs> yes, I am. Yep. Okay, okay. So maybe you can tell us a little uh, bit about what you think about our program today. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll write. I'll write you, JC. Okay, good. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We yeah. are here. We are here. We are right here. Yeah. Wonderful, <laughs> Unity man. Yeah. Victor and Thomas. Yeah. Thank you, Thomas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, thank you. And um, Natasha, you want to say? Uh, you know, um, Mutila, I wanted, this is Kasi here, and I wanted to say something. Oh, yes, Kasi. Um, you have a different name today? Yes, yes, I'm the Senge. Senge only, I didn't see the Kasi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I want to say that um, program, select some, uh, I like the term. That, uh, I see you're breaking up, boy. I don't know how we could solve that, Natasha. I don't know. I don't know. Are you hearing me better? Any better? I hear you better now. Yes, we hear you better now, Kathy. All right, yeah, because I don't have um, um video on the laptop. I'm using the laptop. So I don't have a video. The Zoom does not pick up the camera. That's what I really mean. The zoom is not picking up the camera. Okay, but and, we hear you. Right, that's that's the important thing. And I want, yeah, so I'm saying that it's a, a really great um program today, man. Um, I like the way how it started off and everything, you know. And the interlude with the singing, you know, Dr. Kuman Singh must be commended for that, Dr. Johnny, you know, and I did a kind of a um, what they call a, ex, a kind of extempo writing. Because when I came in, he was talking about himself and in terms of being a man of integrity and that kind of thing. And a number of things resonated with me. So this is, in a sense, a kind of a tribute to him, as well as a tribute to um, poetry and prose and the administration and all the people. You know, as we come to the year's end, <laughs> not wanting to have the last word, of course, but uh, <laughs> just, just using the, this opportunity that you gave to the open floor to say the, the, the lines that I wrote as a kind of extempo notes, you know, just notes added. So it says, behold, I am a man of integrity. Some say honesty is the best policy, but I say honesty is the only policy. Somewhere deep down inside of me, I see daddy, the informant on my BC. I ask myself, what I born for? Everybody know me as Johnny the doctor. Kuman Singh, I could do almost anything. Repairing guitars, quattro strumming, writing, writing, lots of writing. Writing from my heart, all might not be true. I play my part with sincerity to me and to you. I went to America, observed the natives, and I asked myself, why are they called savages? So I write a book to set me and them free. Show me equality. Show me freedom, one more dollar and another one. A geographical account of the steel pan but on sugar cane it land. Poetry and prose is the best thing. Now for me, it's time to sing. Christmas blessings I now bring. Me and my quattro remembering Paul Castillo, a family friend also. Well, that's all I sang. Parang, parang. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Casino. Although you wasn't scheduled to read today because you said you were up in PC. But um, we're so thankful that you read that because I I assume that is from Johnny's pen, right? No, this is extempo from what Johnny said. Well, wonderful, wonderful. This was just yeah, written this is, yeah, for this, the moment, yeah. 
Wonderful, wonderful Kasi. I mean, Kasi is one of our um, also pillars in poetry and prose. So thank you. And um, anybody else want to add anything? Yeah, Johnny. Johnny. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, it's nice to hear you yeah, 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 in Valencia, boy. <laughs> Johnny. So, so in <laughs> Valencia. You muted with Johnny. A hole, with yes, a hole yes, in yes. But, he, but he wrote about a hole in Valencia. Yeah. No? Not that, not just Valencia, you know, that hole all over the. All no, over the I think Valencia country. more hole than anywhere else. Like we think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's nice to hear um, that you're in Valencia and that uh, that you're back in Trinidad. So you're back in Trinidad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Krishna. that's nice. No, to well, hear. I, well, I, I, according to Jovia, Jovia, I come and I go. Oh, okay. All right. What do you call it? <laughs> jo- it's French. Yeah. Wait a minute. What is this? Je vais à Jovia. Je vais. Uh-huh. À okay. Jovia. I go and I come. À Jovia. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, we have um nearly reached the end. It's usually stop at three o'clock. So yeah. Okay. Anybody else? You know, because I know Krishna want to go and eat lunch now. <laughs> So, okay. I just want to pop in and say this is Gersha. I just want to pop in and thank everyone that has contributed this year. And I couldn't think of a better meeting to end off our 2020 year. Thank you. Thank you. I'll uh, let you close. Okay, well, um, thanks for everybody who come. Thanks for all who participated. Thanks for um, being part of Poetry and Prose. And we look forward to having, you know, Again, next year, this is our last program for the year. So, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, all the best. Thank you. Okay, Moti. Yeah. Happy holidays, too. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry and Christmas. Thomas, Merry Christmas. Hey, Merry Christmas. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. Bless the young Ali. Hi. Yes, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Bisha. Everyone. Okay, oh, I yes. have you last one. Okay. See you next year. Right on. And Wish I'm no. still going to be posting. I'm posting a lot of writing prompts on our page. So oh. I'm hoping we'll kick off next year hearing some of them. Yeah, Thank Krishna. Bye-bye. Yeah, Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Yes, yes sir. Krishna. Yeah. All right. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Okay.